Tesla may be ready to sell more 4680 Model Ys soon. Tesla could offer a new entry-level configuration of the Model Y for the 2023 model year. They are reportedly preparing to offer a standard range all-wheel drive Model Y with the 4680 battery cells produced at Giga Texas. The latest speculation of this new version of the 2023 Model Y received approval from the EPA. The EPA added three certificates of conformity for the 2023 Model Y to the database. The new versions approved by the EPA were the Model Y Long Range All-Wheel Drive, Model Y Performance All-Wheel Drive, and just the Model Y All-Wheel Drive. This makes for great speculation that Tesla seems to be introducing a new Model Y in the US. When the Model Y was first announced, there were four trim levels available. Standard range rear wheel drive, long range rear wheel drive, long range all wheel drive, and performance all wheel drive. Tesla accepted orders for the last three but did not offer the long range rear wheel drive option in favor of the all wheel drive variants. They temporarily launched the standard range Model Y in the US before discontinuing it altogether after Elon stated that the range in various driving circumstances did not satisfy Tesla's criteria of excellence. Outside of the United States, they continued to sell the other three variants and they were produced at Giga Shanghai. Then, it appears that Tesla's intentions for the Model Y to use the 4680 battery cells at Giga Texas are altering the US, but the approach here was considerably different than predicted. Instead of developing a new long-range Model Y with those cells, perhaps with even greater range than prior, Tesla introduced a standard range all-wheel drive Model Y for its employees. It cost $60,000, which was significantly more than anyone expected, and included a 279-mile EPA-estimated range. It also went from 0 to 60 in 5 seconds in the battery pack was Tesla's new 4680 cells. Tesla sold this briefly to a few employees and Tesla subsequently sold a small amount through their existing inventory, but we soon saw this configuration completely disappear. Due to the 4680 battery cells supply constraint problems, Giga Texas altered manufacturing the long range Model Ys back to the standard 2170s that they have been producing. Reuters says that they have spoken with a dozen experts with insight into the manufacturing process for Tesla's 4680 cells. Nine have close ties to Tesla, and three of those nine have examined Tesla's new and old battery technology inside and out through teardowns. They stated that Tesla can produce the 4680s in small volume, but when they started big volume production, Tesla ended up with many rejects of the 4680s. They also mentioned that Tesla's production yields are so low that all the anticipated cost savings from the new process have failed to materialize so far for the 4680s. The sources say that Tesla is only halfway towards its goal of making the larger battery cells in quantities it will need to meet future production goals. Battery systems are the most expensive single element in most EVs, so making lower cost, high performance packs is key to producing affordable EVs that can go toe to toe with combustion engine rivals on sticker prices. Tesla is one of only a handful of major automakers that produce their own EV batteries in manufacturing. Tesla's vehicles will remain eligible for US tax credits when many rival EVs may no longer qualify. But I'll go more in depth on the tax credit later in this video. Also, according to the sources from Reuters, Tesla has only been able to cut the Model Y's battery costs between two and $3,000 so far about half the savings Tesla had planned for the 4680s, which was unveiled two years ago. Now, this is still an amazing achievement on Tesla's end for that every bit of money saved from this aspect of production can be pushed towards more and more R&D. But those savings have come mainly from the design of the new 4680 cells, which are bigger than Tesla's current 2170s, rather than the mass production savings and overall chemistry of the 4680s. We weren't sure what would happen with the Model Y in 2023, but it now has been verified that Tesla will more than likely be producing them with the 4680 cells, especially with the recent EPA certificates for the 2023 Model Ys. A caveat is that we do not know exactly when and what day they will start producing and shipping them with the 4680s, but it seems that it's just around the corner. It's anticipated that the regular all-wheel drive variant will be the one with a 279 mile range that was briefly offered earlier this year to its employees. It very well seems that it's in Tesla's plans to launch this again in 2023, making the Model Y have three total configurations. The standard range Model Y would be immensely popular for Tesla, especially with an upcoming $7,500 tax credit in 2023, which they hope to completely be qualified for for this vehicle. Many people believe that once this is in place, Tesla will just hike their pricing. Others predict that Tesla may hike pricing and discontinue some vehicle trims in response to the stricter EV tax credit criteria.
It's speculated that Tesla will cancel the performance and long-range Model 3 come 2023 in the US, even though Tesla said the long-range Model 3 will be coming back in 2023. The tax credit MSRP cap is $55,000 for the category the Model 3 falls into, meaning the long-range and performance Model 3 will not qualify at current pricing. Tesla would need to drop the long-range Model 3 by around $3,000 to qualify, and I think they may do this, but the other theory some people are speculating is that they will just cancel it in favor of the Model Y. The cap is $80,000 for the category the Model Y falls into, so customers buying the car in the long-range configuration will pretty much be on par with the Model 3. The Model Y includes many things that the people prefer over the Model 3. We obviously won't know what will happen until 2023, but this is an interesting perspective. Another speculating theory is that the tax credit will cause another round of Tesla's prices to increase. There are requirements for EVs to meet in order to qualify for the tax credit, both on how the car and its battery is produced and the overall price of the vehicle. To start with, to get the full tax credit, the car has to be assembled in North America. This provision of the law went into effect when Biden signed the legislation a few months ago. There are more than two dozen vehicle makes that meet this requirement, according to the U.S. Department of Energy, but dozens more that have already been disqualified from the tax credit with this requirement alone. Starting January 1st, 2023, more caveats come into effect. Sedans have to be under $55,000 to qualify, and the cost of trucks, vans, and SUVs cannot exceed $80,000. The price caps for used EVs is $25,000, but the used cars will not have to comply with the Made in America requirements. Additionally, the credit would be unavailable to single tax filers with an income above $150,000. For married couples filing jointly, the income limit will be $300,000, and for individuals who file as head of household is $225,000. There are also requirements for the batteries as well. And that's more important because batteries are the most important part of any electric car. A certain percentage of minerals in the EV batteries must come from North America or a country that has a free trade agreement with the US. Much of the battery components must also be manufactured or assembled in North America. That's expected to complicate things for auto companies. Carla Bello, the CEO of the Center for Automotive Research, says it's going to be a huge burden and hurdle to overcome as the U.S. does not have the mining and critical minerals that are needed in North America or from the free trade partners. To top it off, almost 90% of refining is done in China. Currently, no EV on the market will qualify for the full tax credit when the battery requirements take into effect in 2023. Now, it is possible to partially qualify for the tax credit. A buyer could get a partial credit of $3,750 if 40% of the critical minerals in EV batteries are sourced from countries with which the U.S. has a free trade agreement with. The other $3,750 is linked to battery components. Starting in 2023, 50% of components will have to be manufactured or assembled in North America. Over time, the required amounts of minerals in EV batteries sourced from the U.S. or trading partners will increase. Which automakers win and lose under this law? Well, based on what's currently available on the market, higher-end EV car companies like Rivian stand to lose customers who qualify for the tax credit based on the cost of their vehicle. Companies like Tesla or GM that have been producing cars in the US and have already shifted their supply chains are better poised to meet many requirements. They're most likely at the forefront of the technology right now with some vehicles on the market and many more on the way. Meanwhile, international automakers like Toyota and Hyundai face some big decisions. For the Asian and European automakers who have some limited production in North America, that's where we might see some more weighing the scales in terms of is it worthwhile for them to shift production of vehicles or sourcing of the materials to qualify for this, or do they just simply walk away? The Model Y has already begun producing for the 2023 model year. But everything is currently still the same except for them removing the ultrasonic sensors. Still the same 2170 battery cells being produced. Overall, the 4680 battery cells will have the most benefit for Tesla as it saves them a lot of money producing it and not to mention how they can create a structural battery pack out of it. Inspired by aerospace innovation of building airplane wings as fuel tanks, Tesla decided to build a battery pack that acts as a body structure, linking the front and rear underbody parts. Currently, Tesla builds battery packs by combining cells into modules, which when put together forms a battery pack. That battery pack is installed into the vehicle platform. The difference with this new concept is that Tesla is not using modules and instead builds an entire battery pack as a structural platform of the vehicle, with the battery cells helping to solidify the platform as one big unit. Tesla's 4680 structural battery packs may seem like a subtle improvement to the Model Y, but it's something that could truly propel Tesla into the forefront of the automotive sector. It's interesting to see what all will unfold in the coming months for the Tesla Model Y. The Model Y has been by far Tesla's most popular vehicle. 
In my opinion, I believe it's best to place an order for one now and just wait and see what happens with a tax credit come January 1st. And if you're willing to wait a bit longer, the 4680 battery sells. Now I don't necessarily recommend delaying or canceling your order if you're not getting the 4680s. And that's because these new cells will mostly benefit Tesla the most from production and costs. You'll still get the same Model Y with the same range. Since the 4680s are more energy dense, they'll probably just put fewer ones in the battery pack, thus making it the same or around the same range as the Model Ys are currently getting. So you'd more than likely be delaying your order for no reason. As always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, comment your thoughts on the upcoming 2023 Model Y and the 4680 battery cells. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.